Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa out at the North Shore. Today, we're starting a new series, uh, and it's going to be on humor, the joy of humor. And we're going to have four installments. That is the first one. And we're going to start by coming backwards. We're going to start with humor in old age. And our second program down the line will be humor in middle age. The third show will be humor uh, for the young adult and the adolescent, or from the young adult and the adolescent. And the fourth show will be on childhood humor. <clears throat> so today we're starting off, and to help us with old age and humor, I've got my good friend Tony Barron, who always has a smile and a laugh for me every time I see her. Welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's start off uh, with the idea, and the thing that's always impressed me about humor is that uh, humor is not easy, and it's strange, and people react differently to humor. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, more in the show. Uh, but what it boils down to, uh, when we're presented with hard times in life, which you know the show is all about, uh, we have a choice. We have a choice either to laugh or to cry. And of course, uh, this show is definitely in the uh, arena of let's make that choice to laugh. So maybe that's a good place to start, Tony. How do we how do we make that choice in the face of a lot of negativity that we see on the news and around us every day? How do we make the choice to laugh? We make the choice to laugh by, in my case, I cried first. So um I was a volunteer out at the men's prisons since 1987. I've been to all three of the men's prisons. And just recently, I was chastised for holding hands with the men. We do that in a circle when we're saying aloha, praying. And they told me no, no touching with the inmates. Well, I just couldn't control myself or didn't think about it, whatever my excuse was. And they put me on suspension for two months. And then they said, uh, oh, and then you have to go through the training again, which since 1987, I think I've been through 15 or 20 times. And you know what? I just said, maybe it's time for a change. Maybe the universe is saying, Tony, you're just too comfortable. So let's kick you in the acoli and you uh, you don't have to come back. And I said, okay, uh, I won't come back. Time for a change. I'm almost 83 years old. So um, the universe said, let's get on with this show. So here I am talking to you about humor, and I have so many stories, I can't wait to share them with you. So the, for the first week, I just cried and cried and cried because my world changed and it wasn't my, really wasn't my idea or my choice. And now I'm ready to bounce on down the road. And the, one of the first things I wanna say to you is that I just, I, I really love being old. It is, it, I am free at 83. What can anybody threaten me with? Oh, I know they could say, if you do this wrong, we'll give you life in prison. How much time do I have left? <laughs> so no threat is possible for me. I, I even got a um, ticket uh, in my car. I was at Costco, and uh, when I came back, I had a ticket I had parked in handicap, but forgot to hang that placard. So this was during COVID, and uh, I was on Zoom with the judge. And he said, okay, you can either plead guilty, innocent, or guilty with uh, an excuse or a reason. And I said, okay, I'm guilty. I didn't hang that card. And my excuse is I'm old. And he laughed and he said, case dismissed. <laughs> so that worked for me. We're, I, and, you know, another kind of silly thing, but it's fun. I like people. I like touching. And when I'm standing on a street corner now, if there's a good looking man next to me, 
I say, excuse me, sir, would you hold my hand when we cross the street? <laughs> that, that's uh, what I call my cheap thrills, yeah. <laughs> that's terrific. You know, I certainly agree with all that. And the, the uh, you know, the card thing was always a catch-22 because I have a card that says uh, that as well. Uh, and I figured, well, uh, if I don't hang it up, they're going to bust me. Uh, but if I forget to hang it up, they're going to bust me. Uh, you know, so it's like a catch 22. And I thought, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to leave it up because they say that, you know, you're supposed to have it up there. And when you stop, you take it down. So you don't keep it up there. Uh, well, I'm saying I was going to, I was either going to forget it or I wasn't going to put it up. So, uh, or I would forget to have it up there. So I was sort of had both ways. So I just kept it up there and nobody's said anything to me about that, about it blocking any view. So I was real happy about that. But I think that you're, you know, the way you started is great because that affects all of us, uh, whether we're young or we're old. Every time we have a door closed, the saying is that another door opens. And I've always found that true, whatever age I've been at. And I've had a number of doors close on me. But all I have to do is look around and there's a new door opening up. Now that new door isn't perfect. It doesn't guarantee a opening up to paradise or anything like that where there's no wrong. But it offers me a new start, like you're talking about, and it offers me a chance to see new possibilities and new chances to enjoy life and to laugh and to have a good time. And so I've always taken that open door and walked through it with uh, with pleasure. Uh, so I've been real happy with that. Uh, like I said, whatever age I'm in. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, being alone. Because that's one of the things I think that most of us in old age are worried about. And I think that it was really increased with COVID. When COVID came in, we were cut off from a lot of our friends and our family members. A lot of us were. And that's very hard. When we most need people, we yeah. couldn't get to people. Yeah. We couldn't get that support that we were used to. So uh, I always found that enjoying humor was the way to, you know, really take the edge off of that, uh, especially if I was able to share that humor uh, with other people. So maybe, Tony, you can tell us a little bit about how you share humor. And uh, even when we can't reach out in person to people, like we haven't been able to uh, during COVID and that, how we can share humor and how we can share laughter with people. I think being vulnerable it, for me, I, I guess my sense of humor is self-deprecating. So it's not for everybody, but it, it certainly makes me laugh. And in this latest instance, I I cried the first week because it was like a death to be cut off from almost 40 years of meeting with the inmates twice a week. And uh, I asked to come in one last time to say aloha to the men because we are family and they said no they couldn't accommodate me so I was very it was a, a harsh ending for me so I cried for the first week and I said well that's enough of that you know I don't need to do that anymore so I called hospice and I volunteered for hospice because staying busy is important serving being with other people is important and then I said, oh, I know this is a little heavy. I'll call Arthur Murray and take some dance lessons. <laughs> so that's what I did. And I haven't started them yet, but I've called and we're working on that. And uh, let, me, let me tell you a little something about um, computers are another thing that just winds my clock so tight. I, I can't see which way is up. It really makes me feel stupid, but there you go. Maybe I've been stupid and didn't know it. Um, one of the things that, that my path to hell is lined with passwords. Whatever password they want, I can never figure it out. I've got a file of friggin' passwords, but for whatever reason, it's the bane of my life. So when it says, um, give us your ID, well, 
if I said that to you or anybody else, I think you would say, well, my ID and maybe you give me your social security number or your full name or your um, uh, your email address, any of that, or maybe even what it, what is my ID? I still have no idea. I'm almost 83 years old. I don't know what they want when they ask for that. So uh, I said, well, maybe it's maybe it's my name. Maybe it's my ID. Maybe it's what my mother used to call me when I was a little kid. How do you tell? I just, I just try them on. Sometimes they accept it and sometimes they don't. Another thing that... Um, my life has changed. I used to go to uh, silver sneakers at the YMCA and I recommend it highly. It's nice gentle exercises because that's one of the things so many of us do is we become sedentary. So I realized before uh, I signed up again after COVID that my uh, I don't have to go there because I am so busy going to the bathroom. <laughs> go to the bathroom 100 times a day and 50 at night that I'm getting all the exercise I can handle. <laughs> now, that's that's a way to look at it with humor, and that's a way to look at it positively. I love it. Wow. <clears throat> so, yeah, and I, of course, I face the same thing at night, uh, but uh, it's a nice way to get exercise, that's for sure. The, uh, we need to stay connected to people when we when we lose a an avenue or a venue for tactile for love for laughter when that avenue comes to an end we must we must do something um get a dog go to the shelter get a rabbit get a bird get something that will keep those love channels flowing because it, otherwise we just dry out, not just our skin with the wrinkles and all that, but our uh, the way we think. You know, we've got to keep open. Yeah. The, the Ken and Tony inside are the same as we were when we were 12 or 30 or 50 or 70. Uh, so we can't just lop that off and stop it as if it didn't matter. We have to keep the love flow going there's just no other way around it and the love flow is really helped by humor and laughter that's for sure now before covid uh i had many years belonged to a group called aloha ha which was a humor group and we met <clears throat> once a month and we brought jokes and uh videos and everything and we shared it with food of course in hawaii we always do everything with food <clears throat> and we had a great time and it was great getting together with those people sounds wonderful uh, yeah, and it certainly was. And, uh, of course, at all our gatherings and our celebrations throughout the years, uh, especially uh, here in Hawaii, we do a lot of it at the beach and a lot of sharing with fun and humor and all that. Uh, and that seemed to close up, you know, or at least a lot of it closed up during uh, the COVID. Uh, but uh, Tony was one of the great uh, friends of mine because she was always sending me humor in emails and that was always welcome on my computer now the computer may give us some problems especially if we're a little older but uh it also can be the bearer of humor and happiness with those uh jokes that are sent around and tony is one of the, the best at that so every time i see an email from tony i open it up really quickly because i'm pretty sure there's going to be some laughs in there and once i read that i'm going to be pretty happy so uh Tell us about that. Tell us about sharing uh, uh, with friends via uh, emails or texts or whatever. Uh, and it's, it's having a chance to laugh uh, virtually as well as in person. I had two women friends in the mainland and uh, they both lived alone as I do. So there's three old ladies, they're older than I am. And just to see if we're still kicking the next day, we would email each other, uh, hi, good morning, how's your weather? Or if we couldn't even deal with that, we would just send jokes that come through the internet and that uh, we would share with each other. 
uh, and I was always glad to hear that they liked those jokes because, you know, that's not everybody's cup of tea. So um, that's what we would do. We would, we, sometimes we wouldn't even put a note with it. We, they just know it came from us and then we must be alive if they got an email from us. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. So that works. Just to, just to say, hey, I'm here. And if it doesn't bounce back, you must be there too. Now, uh, I've asked Michael to put up uh, some uh, jokes that I got from Tony. And oh. so, Michael, maybe you could uh, display a couple of those jokes and we can talk about that. Tony, you want to read the first one? Uh, let's see. It says, uh, as you get older, you get to stay, uh, you've got to stay positive. For example, the other day, uh, down, uh, oh, I fell down the stairs. That's the fastest I've moved in decades. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I go get another one and I'll read that one. Okay. Last night, the internet stopped working, so I spent a few hours with my family. They seemed like good people. <laughs> uh, what, that's one of the things that's been interesting about uh, COVID and that. Uh, some of the people that we hadn't been in contact with in a long time, all of a sudden, we're in contact with. And that's opened up. Talk about opening up a door when one door is closed. And all of a sudden, uh, my cousins, for instance, I hadn't talked to my cousins in 40 years. Uh, and all of a sudden, every month since COVID, we're doing a Zoom and sharing our lives and catching up after 40 years of not being able to see each other. Because, of course, they're all over the world. Uh, they stretch out from Alaska to uh, Georgia on the east coast of America. And I'm sitting in Hawaii. So uh, all those disparate people came together again and reestablished relationships. And uh, we do a lot of laughter among ourselves, too. So. All these things are so important, and uh, we have to avoid that choice of just sort of sitting and moaning, you know, and saying, oh, things are so bad, you know, and uh, it just sort of gets stuck in that, that it goes over and over again, like a record that's playing uh, and just, just repeats itself over and over and over again. Uh, and that's one of the things I've always admired about Tony as she gets out there and tries new things and reconnects with people and brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. Uh, maybe that now is a good time to start with uh, the effects of health. I've always been concerned uh, now that I'm, especially now that I'm getting older, I'm concerned about my health. And by the way, so is my daughter. She's uh, listening in. She's always worried about where I'm at. Uh, but I've always been a fan of uh, laughter and feeling good as a way to help myself physically as well as mentally. It's one thing to sort of perk up your uh, mental acuity by laughter, but it's also great for the body as well. I taught a class at Chaminade University for many years called The Psychology of Humor and Laughter. And one of the books that I required was An Anatomy of an Illness by Norman Cousins. He was diagnosed with a very rare disease from which only one in 500 people were gonna recover. And so he thought to himself, well, those aren't very good odds. So what he did was he isolated himself <clears throat> and he was in the hospital on that, but he watched, he took two hour dosages of not medicine, but two hour doses of watching funny shows, funny movies and wow. laughing for two hours and then resting, you know, and, you know, catching up and then coming back for another dose of two hours. And he beat that illness and went on to write that book and a number of other books that he shared with people about the physical effects, the physical, positive physical effects of laughing and that. And I was just talking to another good friend of mine the other night, and he's into affirmations. And he's into affirmations of laughing, which I, I know about from teaching that class, where you start laughing. And uh, that first laugh is, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, just seems strange. You're laughing at nothing and, you know, and you're feeling that, you know, what am I laughing at nothing for? And then you add, do it again and you go, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're laughing for real. You're going, wow, <laughs> you know, and it's a reaction that's very strange to most people, but it really works and it gets your whole body uh, going up and feeling good. It, it elevates you. Uh, and I've always been a big, uh, big fan of that. And always made that a big part of my life. 
yes, I'm really concerned about the physical, doing everything that my doctors tell me and my uh, physical therapists tell me and everything, but I'm also spending a lot of time laughing. So I just wanted to uh, share that as well. And I, I know that you laugh a lot, Tony, and uh, Thank you. and uh, tell us a little bit about that, how it, how it makes you feel when you, when you can sit down and just laugh. Belly laughs are the best. Uh -huh. No, there is one that's better than a belly laugh. A belly laugh that makes you pee your pants. <laughs> that, that's the best. You know you have a friend when you start leaking on yourself. <laughs> yeah, so. Now, most I, of us get real embarrassed about that, but there's a definitely positive side to that. You're saying that's great. Well, see, there's another benefit. Now that I'm, uh, now that we're this old, I see my girlfriends were all wearing not diapers, but something close to it because we leak all the time anyway. So to do it laughing is the best medicine that you can buy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. and, and, uh, one of one of my best boyfriends a uh, hundred years ago. I went to work and I was I was in the serving business, and uh, I don't know if I had the flu or whatever it was. I wasn't feeling well, and I went to work. And this man came in and sat down, and in no time at all, he had me laughing. I said, "Whoever you are, I love you." I mean, <laughs> it's just the magic bullet, no matter what the story is. Absolutely. See, so I am so old, I tell everyone that I am wise. No one is older around to correct me. <laughs> Another one is, uh, you can tell me your deepest, darkest, most shameful secrets because I won't remember them. <laughs> it allows us to tell stories over and over again. That's a wonder about it. Yeah, and sometimes I laugh at them. <laughs> when I went to hospice to volunteer to be auditioned, uh, they wanted to know if I was checking in. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. I think having humor and laughing at ourselves is better than being young or pretty or rich or thin or any of those other good things we like. Laughter makes us irresistible. You know, that's uh, and sort of jumping ahead uh, to a little preview of <clears throat> adolescent humor. That always uh, struck me as uh, something because I was always very shy of talking to, to girls at that age when I was an adolescent. And uh, somehow, even if I stumbled, if there was a joke around or something that I could tell, I, it loosened me up. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot easier to uh, introduce oneself uh, if you were able to do it some way, uh, especially with self-deprecating humor. Yeah. Uh, that tells the person that you're with right away that uh, you're not full of it and you're not trying to, uh, you're just being yourself and enjoying being yourself. And that's a big uh, plus when you're trying to make contact with a person. So uh, at any age, I think that worked very well. I've Tell heard- from, Yeah, go ahead. I've heard from, uh, on television probably, from several uh, comedians, George Carlin, and uh, I don't remember the names, but all superstar comedians. And they said when they were in school, they were bullied. So the way they would get her, get their safety to keep from getting beat up or kicked or whatever was happening, being bullied, uh, when they could make their adversary laugh, then they were home free. Yeah, and that's the big thing about that is that so very few people can do that. Like the person who came up to you in the restaurant, that's a gift, uh, and that's not easily come by. So. Uh, you know, if the bully comes up to you and you're able to make them laugh like you're talking about, that bully is going to say, wow, this is uh, somebody I need to know and need to be around because I like the fact that this person can make me laugh and I'll just beat up somebody else, uh, which is not a good way of uh, eliminating bullies, but it's certainly a way of uh, saving yourself at the moment. Uh, so 
just like I would save myself from embarrassment while I was talking to uh, to girls, uh, which also works at childhood too. We'll talk about that when we, you know, sometime in the future we get to the humor and uh, humor of childhood. So that would be great. Tony, we're running a little short of time. We, you know, that's the thing about uh, old age is you and I have so many stories to talk about, and I, you know, and I'm, you know, and I wanted to get to a few others, but we're running short, so. Uh, usually at the end of the program, I usually ask the guest, uh, which I've done with you, Tony's been with me a number of times on this show, uh, to give advice to the audience uh, who may be having difficulty finding humor in life, uh, that may be sort of overwhelmed by all the negativity around. What, what advice might you give them or suggestions that you might give them to, uh, to enjoy life more than they are? You just got to give it away. Just keep giving it away, even if they don't laugh, even if they don't like you, even if you're old and wrinkled. If you can give them a hug and a kiss on the cheek and give them another hug, you just got to have that, that tactile or else you're alone. And there's no reason for us to be alone. There are so many people out there who need us. And I like the idea of hugs. It's hard to uh, keep a frown when you're being hugged. Amen. And uh, so that's really a very positive thing, just as it's very hard to, uh, you know, keep a straight face when you're hearing a lot of humor. And by the way, humor is not easy, but, uh, you know, the jokes that we, Tony and I were talking about, we didn't get to all of them that uh, Tony had been passing around. But uh, the key with, I think, with the email, if you're doing email and sending jokes around like uh, Tony and I are, uh, don't expect to get a laugh on every one of them because humor is not uh, is not easy. But uh, if we get two laughs out of 10, 10 email jokes, we are doing well. And we've given that person that priceless gift of uh, getting away from all the negativity of life and, uh, and all the hard times that we're in. So uh, thank you for, for sending me those emails, Tony. And thank you for being on this show. It's just been, as always, a pleasure having you here. I love you, Ken. <laughs> thank you very much. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Um, I'm hoping that you'll join us again in two weeks. We'll be back with Finding Happiness in Hard Times. And a special thanks, of course, to Think Tech Hawaii, to people like Michael and Jay and Haley and Carol, who make this program uh, very possible. So take care and make sure that you get a laugh this week. Aloha. Thank you. liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.